Welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In today's video, we'll be covering frequency distribution tables for class limits with midpoints. And in this video, it's really important that you get a few things clear. Firstly, which formulas are you using to calculate your mean variance and standard deviation for your frequency distribution? Secondly, we want to know how many decimal places we will be rounding each of these values. And thirdly, the most important of these are what the value of n is. And n represents the sum of the frequencies, so it gives us a total number of samples for calculating the mean, standard deviation, and the variance. So these are the most important things that you have to figure out before you start uh, collectively gathering information from this video, all right? Now, here we're given a frequency distribution that has class limits and frequencies. And basically, with just limits and frequencies for many classes of any information, these could be annual salaries, it could be age ranges, it could be anything where we have a frequency of a population of people who fit into certain categories. And to do this frequency distribution, to calculate mean variance and standard deviation, we're going to need a few things. For one, we're going to need the midpoint of every class limit data set. We're also going to need the product of the midpoint and the frequency so we could calculate the mean after we take the sum of this column. We'll have an approximate amount of how much each frequency, each, each sample contributes to their values. And we'll divide that by the total number of samples to get the average. And thirdly, the variance and standard deviation, we'll have to take the midpoint, square it, and multiply this column by the value of the column of the f. So we can compute the x squared times f. Now let's begin these calculations, right? It's going to take us a little while. So for the first midpoint, what we're going to have to do here is we're going to have to calculate the mid-range of the two limits, the upper and the lower, right? And so to do that, what we're actually doing is we're taking the left limit, the zero, and we're adding the four, the right limit, and we're dividing that by two. So here we get four divided by two, which gives us a grand final of just two. All right? And we'll correspondingly go down this column row by row for every class limit until we calculate each and every midpoint. All right? So here, the next limit, I won't write out the details, but you can follow the same instruction, which takes the mid-range of the two data values that you're given. So the mid-range of 5 and 9 is going to be 14 divided by 2, which gives us 7. The mid-range of 10 and 14 is the sum of 10 and 14, which is 24 divided by 2, gives us 12. The mid-range of 15 and 19 gives us a sum of 34. And the, different, the division of this, 34 divided by 2, is 17. The mid-range of 20 and 24, we add them first. That gives us 44. 44 divided by 2 is 22. Now, we don't have to do any summing on this column. But before we do forget, let's take the sum of the F column before we get to the sum of the XF column, right? So here we have 7, 11, 10, 9, and 3. So 3 and 7 is 10 plus another 10, that's 20, plus another 20, that's 40. So here I'm going to put all the sums in the color of blue so we can see the difference between the data we're writing and inscribing and the sums of our columns. So here our sum of f, which is our n value, is already going to be 40. All right. The next values we're going to compute are the x times the f. So we're taking the midpoints and multiplying it by each of the frequencies that correspond to this data. So the first product we're taking is the 2 times the 7. 2 times 7 gives us a 14. Then we have 7 times 11, which is 77. Then we have 12 times 10, and that's 120. Now even though I'm computing these pretty quick, don't, don't forget that you should be using a calculator to do these calculations, all right? The more accurate you are with these calculations, the better they are for you, all right? Next is 9 times 17. And that's going to give us a total of 153. The next computation we're doing is 3 times 22, and that's going to give us 66. Now again, as I just said, we want to make sure that these computations are accurate. If you're very good with arithmetic, it's good. But if you're on an exam, it'd probably benefit you to get through these calculations as quick as you can, all right? Now here, we're going to take the sum of this column. And when we add all of these values together, 66, 153, 120, 77, and 14, we're going to get a grand total of 430. And that is the sum of the x times f column. 
And we can see this, this sum is going to be represented by this data set here. While the sum of the f is actually your n value, it's going to be these three here. In the mean formula, the n is this one, the 40, and the sum of the x times f is actually right here. So let's go ahead and go calculate our mean while we've gotten this far already, right? So our x bar value is going to be equivalent to the sum of x times f, which is 430, divided by the sum of f, which is our n value. And that sum of x times f divided by n is exactly these two. That's 430 divided by 40, and that's going to give us exactly 10.75. So here we have our, our mean, 10.75. So we have one down and two to go. All that's left is the variance and the standard deviation. And to calculate the variance, we need the sum of the x squared times f column. We will also need the sum of the x times f column. We'll also need the n, which represents the sum of the f column. And we can compute this variance. To get the standard deviation, we just need the variance and we just need to take the square root of that variance. And now, uh, another detail I'd like to explain is the mean value is actually our x bar because it's a sample mean. Our standard deviation, I mean our variance here is s squared because it's a sample variance as well as our standard deviation, which is also a sample standard deviation. And that's why we have the letters s and x bar here, all right? So now next, we have to make the column of x squared. To make the column of x squared, we're literally just taking the midpoint values and squaring them. So this would be 2 squared, this would be 7 squared, this would be 12 squared, 17 squared, and 22 squared. So let's go ahead and calculate these right with a calculator, which is the easiest way. So 2 times 2 gives us 4. 7 times 7, that's 49. 12 times 12, that's 144. 17 times 17, that's 289. And finally, we have 22 times 22, that's 484. Now, there's no need to worry here because there's no use in summing up this column. So let's just move on to the next step here. Now we have the x squared column times the f column. And for the first value here, you're just doing 4 times 7 on your calculator. That's just going to give you a simple 28. Right on the next calculation, we have 11 times 49, which is just going to be 539. Our next computation, 144 times 10, that's 1440. Our next computation is going to be 289 times 9, that's 2601. And our final calculation here is going to be 484 times 3, and 484 times 3 is 1452. Now what we need to do is take the sum of this column so we could get our sum here of x squared times f. And the sum of this column, once we compute it on our calculator, is going to give us the value 6060. So a quick reference note. I'm going to go and define our values that we took sums of here in blue so that we could see them highlighted in this video, right? So firstly, we have the sum of f, which is actually considered to be n. And this is 40. We have the sum of the x times f, which is 430. And finally, we have the sum of the x squared times f, which is 6060. Now we're going to go ahead and calculate the variance, which is pretty much the largest equation we have here, because the standard deviation is just the square root of it. So this is pretty much one of the only two formulas you'll be using. Whereas the square root of the, this, this variance is a very easy computation. It's very easy on your calculator, and you cannot do that by hand. So please do make sure you have a good scientific or at least a Texas Instruments calculator to do this, right? Or even a Casio. So here our S squared equation is going to take the n, which is 40. And we're going to multiply that n by the sum of the x squared times f column. That's this column. So we're taking 60, 60. And we're subtracting the value of 430 squared. And all of this is divided by 40 times 39. Now, if you're running this on a calculator, make sure you compute the entire line in one step. 
That means you write exactly 40 parentheses 60, 60 minus parentheses set 40, 30 raised to the second power. And if you're computing this accurately, what you should get is exactly 57,500. 57,500 is the final result. For our denominator here of 40 times 39, if we just calculate this briefly, we'll get 1560. Now just because you're using a calculator doesn't mean you have to do everything in one step. Take your time. Break down the numerator, break down your denominator, get both soundly done, if you, even if you have to do just the products of these two minus this value squared over the product of these two. And if we were doing it that way, in any case, I'll just write the results of these products on top of each other. So here we would have 24, 24, 0, 0, take away. The product of 400, uh, 430 squared is going to give us 184, 900. And the product of these two, as we already know, is 1560. And the difference between 24, 24, uh, I mean 242,400 minus 184,900 is simply 57,500 over the same value of our denominator. Now the difference, the division of these two are going to give us a repeating decimal number. And here again, we're, we're rounding this one to two decimal places because it gave us a solid number. So if we had to round this to the nearest tenth, this becomes 10.8. But over here, we're going to go just one extra decimal place than what our actual number gave us, which is just routine work, that it, the way it's done routinely. And so when I divide these two, I get the number 36.85. Eight, nine. And I'm going to stop right here because I'm rounding to the nearest thousandth, right? So now that I have this number and I round my number, I get 36.859. And here I see that my S squared value is 36.859. Now to get my standard deviation value, I'm just taking the square root of my variance. So all I have to do here is just plug in my 36.859 or if I already have this long calculation that this produces on my calculator and take the square root of it, I'm going to get a real simple number out of it. And here the value of my standard deviation is just going to be 6.07115 in continuation and we'll round this to two decimal places as well. I mean to three. This becomes 6.071. Now, if you have to adjust these to a lesser value, feel free to do so. All right? Thank you.